and I'm really grateful, to, especially to hear from um, Mel and all of the amazing work that you're doing and the in innovative approaches to communication and creating communities um, and really supporting midwives that are there working hard implementing these models, but also the midwives working hard supporting women so that they can understand the opportunities that are, are there for us to work in ways that we kind of always long to in the hearts of, 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 of our practice really. So mm -hmm. it's so wonderful to be here. And um, it's a really special uh, interest area for me. It was my very first job when I qualified from um, Birmingham Women's Hospital. I, I did my training and then I went straight to a continuity of care, one-to-one uh, -one midwifery team with Shaw Stark Kennington at St. Thomas's Hospital. And I was really lucky that my first my first boss as a new midwife was uh, Jackie Dunkley Bent. She was my consultant midwife who had secured this new team. And I was the very first uh, continuity of carer midwife at St. Thomas's at the time, uh, working all on my own, but then I got buddies and um, one of my really good friends, Mel Denton became my buddy. And we absolutely always talk about that time being the best ever time that we had in our careers working clinically supporting families throughout the continuity, driving home birth rates up, um, more importantly, building relationships, trusting relationships with women and their families, supporting optimal outcomes and loving being there, practicing, um, feeling like the call the midwife. It was before that uh, book and film came out, but it was just really wonderful for us. So uh, now I'm working in education. Um, for me, I want to explore the potential of relational continuity of care for effective learning and practice for future midwives. And that's the sort of focus of what I wanted to talk about today, really, because I loved it so much. I wanted to be able to find ways for midwives of the future to learn about how to do it and get the skills needed so that it became part of their everyday practice. So we know the drivers for change. We've had them around, like Mel said, for four, four years and beyond. And actually, um, Sue Down sent some things around our GISC mail uh, research group um, about sort of evidence and, and sessions that were running in the 1980s around continuity mm -hmm. and uh, before changing childbirth. And we know that this is the model. It's historical model. It's about being in the community and being there for families and learning about the families that you're caring for and, and, and feeling connected. Um, but it's also supported so brilliantly by evidence. But like Mel said, we have faced a lot of challenges and that has been a shame to see that with all of the great work that's taking place. We know there are continuing service demands, constraints and staffing challenges, especially because of COVID and the impact that continues to have. And so we've got to find ways to address those um, collectively. And one of the sort of things that I feel is giving us a real opportunity from an education point of view are the amazing future midwife proficiencies, standards of proficiency that have been um, developed. And obviously now universities are working really hard um, as they recover from COVID to kind of start to implement these standards. And, and they provide us a fantastic opportunity to, con to focus down on continuity of care and carer as one of the six domains. And we need to find ways to embed this meaningfully into our curriculum. Uh, we often, uh, many, most curriculums would have an aspect of the curriculum that focuses on case holding and continuity elements, but it's how can we really meaningfully move this forward to respond to what our workforce colleagues and staff and people like Mel that are working hard to implement this um, for midwives and for women in practice, how can we support you from an education point of view to supply students that are qualifying with the skills needed to run in self-managed teams so at UCLan in 2012, we revalidated our programme. So it's, it's a while ago and we've been waiting sort of with bated breath for these new standards to kind of launch and change and update our curriculum. But we've already had a case-based learning, woman-centred, person-centred curriculum. Um, and we've kind of done that theoretically. So students follow women all the way through their theoretical journey. They don't do AMP on a Monday and then sociology on a Tuesday. They look after a woman and they go off and learn about those aspects around that woman and that family unit. 
But what we found is that when they go off into the amazing trust maternity units that we put place them in, there can be variable uh, placement learning opportunities for them because of the way that the services are structured. Um, and, and, and often, to be fair, we, we place students in the service and they follow the service. And I th started to think uh, about two years ago, I went to Australia and they've really embedded continuity of care into their education system, especially at the Griffith University with um, Professor Jenny Gamble and her team. Uh, and I started to think, right, hold on, we're doing like this case-based learning curricula theoretically where the students follow women and families and people but then they're often going off into, into their placement settings and following the service. And you think, well, what kind of midwives do we become if we follow the service? And we know that there's a lot of tension and pressures for midwives to, to serve the service rather than the, maybe the families in their care. So what we're trying to do at, at UCLan is now move to learning through continuity so actually sort of saying to students, what we'd like you to do is to follow women, is to meet women, become their continuity of care student, whether this service has a continuity team ready for you or not, you can still just follow women because we've been doing that successfully in smaller numbers for a quite a long time. And what then the student can do is they can then go with the woman to those placement areas and experience all of those placement areas alongside the woman. So we're still getting all the experiences that the students need to meet their EU criteria and course requirements. But what's crucial is at the heart of our curriculum is the family, is the woman, is the baby, is, is the person. And that's what we want to center around. And wrapped around the woman is the student for us as educators. And then wrapped around that is all of the midwifery teams and the service and obviously us as educators. We know that these approaches really make a difference to student learning and experiences. And we've also seen from this work in Australia that it's having an impact on women and families as well. And we know that it can transform student learning uh, experiences and environments. It's most important for transforming the future workforce. If, if we're getting difficulties um, to implement this, why don't we make sure that we're recruiting student midwives that want to work in this model and then helping them to learn the skills to work in the model when they qualify. And obviously it helps us to meet the future midwife proficiencies, whilst also, and this is crucial for the UK, is uh, uh, obviously we in across England we're needing to recruit more students and train more students so we have more midwives for the workforce and that's we're going to be training a thousand more students every year so this model will also enable quality and capacity because there are lots of women having babies so as long as you can follow women and get in your experiences you can have lots of students there following the women and families so what we've created at UCLan and um, that's we're going for validation in November is a gestational curriculum a curriculum that allows the students to go out from theory to meet women along the women's journey and come back into theory to learn how they can best support those women that they're caring for um, and this is just the area so they're going to be being with woman person and family and we're running two research projects at the moment one one's about enabling effective learning environments using clip which is a collaborative learning in practice model that was brought in for nursing from um, the Netherlands and it's been implemented successfully at, St. John, at um, John Paget University hospitals and also in nursing at one of our local trusts in Preston, Lancashire teaching hospitals have, put, have, have helped implement this across all of nursing. We've piloted it this last year in midwifery on the wards but what we'd really like to do is pilot this um, coaching and peer learning approach um, using continuity so we we invite students in second and third year to come together in small groups which will mirror and mimic this the continuity team approach so they can learn the skills of working collaboratively and supporting each other um, to prepare for continuity in practice by and this is what Mel you were saying it's a culture change so we feel that we need to change the culture of learning throughout midwifery and beyond to help really prepare students 
Alongside that research project, we've also got a second research project where we're evaluating locally in, a, in Lancashire and South Cumbria, uh, our continuity teams to work, learn what's working well and, and in an appreciative way, um, what's working well and how can that, we create resources and packages and modeling that we can then share throughout the local maternity system and obviously regionally and beyond. So it'd be so good to connect with you, Mel, and, and learn how we could, you know, across the borders, we can kind of communicate and share ideas together. This will be a six month project with my colleagues, Professor Sue Down, Jill Thompson, and we've just recruited recently Dr. Claire Feely as well. And we will have clinical staff involved in that. So it's brand new and we're gonna be looking over the next six months at this. But what we'd like to do is, is combine both of those two research projects for the next six months. So from March onwards next year, and pilot um, this continuity of care approach with students in a, in a collaborative learning environment. And then what we can do with that is learn how we can then implement it with the new standards that will be implemented from September 2021. So Carol Mashadi, our lead midwife for education, is leading that curriculum development. And then we're working really closely with the, the local maternity system and our programme director, Vanessa Wilson, and obviously the workforce work stream. So Catherine Sim from Health Education England and Joe Doherty, the project lead, we're working really closely and with our amazing continuity of care leads. So Jane Cooper and Jess Sanford and Ruth Deary. Uh, we've got a whole team of fantastic people like you, Mel, that are working really hard. So we want to find ways that we can build and integrate students alongside that. So that's kind of where we're heading. And we want to make sure that we learn before we fully implement the kind of things that we'll, uh, students will face and to make it meaningful learning for students. So that's kind of uh, what we're hoping to do. And it'd be really great to build connections with anyone else that's kind of got these ideas nationally. If they wanted to get in touch, it'd be really good to find ways that we can replicate this in different areas. Uh, and, and support each other so we don't all have to create the same resources we could share them couldn't we and I know sort of Claire Matthews who's our, our deputy um, head of midwifery you know chief midwife um, across our region um, is working really hard to strengthen continuity of care and working really hard to do that especially in, in, in vulnerable communities and communities that can really make a difference so I'm really looking forward to connecting the dots and building a community of practice beyond our local region. So hopefully that's given some insights into, into the things that we're doing. Thanks for watching this video from the Maternity and Midwifery Forum. For more expert opinion and analysis, hit the button below to subscribe.